you very much. Please have your seats. First of all, allow me to congratulate the leadership and team of Air Corps, the Chief of Staff, and team of the Ghana Defense Force, and I acknowledge also the work of our immediate past Chief of Staff, Bess, I think he's here, the members of the Defense Board, and in particular from my office, the National Security Advisor, and all the stakeholders who contributed significantly to the successful return of the Beechcraft and the successful acquisition of the new Bell 412. A lot has been said, a lot was already said on the assets itself. But perhaps the greatest asset that we've invested in for both the Beechcraft and this new 412 will be the human resource assets of the Guyana Defense Force. We have invested heavily in ensuring that we have the right complement of human resource personnel and also the right level of training. I would want to invite in front those who are trained on the Beechcraft and the 412 so that we can acknowledge them and the role they will play in ensuring that these assets are efficiently, effectively, reliably uh, brought into operation, but more importantly, that we keep them into operation with good safety measures, uh, with care, and ensuring that the assets are at all times the pride of our work. So I'll ask you to come in front so they we can acknowledge you, uh, all those who are trained, you know yourselves, on the Beechcraft and 412. If this is the speed at which you are going, then you're not doing justice to the craft. Let us give them a resounding round of applause. So it is not only about the assets. These assets are just a part of the whole equation. The asset means nothing if we don't have the human resource capacity, if we don't have the right skill set. And if you, as you can see here, the level of investment we have made in training and the emphasis we have placed on training tells a story of how important we value the human resource asset in the Ghana Defense Force. Thank you very much. Please. It is my view that the modernization of Air Corps or the aviation wing of the Ghana Defense Force has just begun. I must compliment the Chief of Staff for contextualizing the vision of the country and for the seamless integration of what is needed in the Guyana Defense Force in ensuring that the vision of national prosperity embedded with national security is complementary and advanced together. So today as we celebrate the acquisition of these assets, we're in the final stages of having a contract for another piece of asset, that is the Don Air. So before the end of this year, we will have the contract in place for the Don Air, and we'll have another set of personnel from the Guyana Defense Force sent to training on the Don Air. So we will have another complement of human resource asset with another piece of asset to secure our borders and to meet the expanding demands of national development. And the expanded demand of national development also requires rapid investment in our Coast Guard, our marine assets. 
And whilst we are awaiting the new metal shark arrival, we are already in discussions with different stakeholders on a model ship that would help us in securing our EZ and ensuring that the commercial value of our EZ is not exploited without us having a presence there. And that is what the Beechcraft would allow us to do when outfitted with additional equipment in the dawn air when that comes into the fleet. It would help us to tremendously secure our EZ. We know from information that has been shared with us that we are losing a lot of revenue with illegal fishing within our EZ. So the commercial viability of the investment is one that is also taken into consideration. The Defense Board has also authorized the Air Corps, the Chief of Staff, to move now on setting out a plan to take over the operations, maintenance of the Gaisuku hangar at Ogle. So that that Gaisuku hangar would now come into use for Air Corps, but in an expanded way. For aggressive policing, we also need assets to support our police along the coast and we'll be investing in pieces of asset to support policing work. And the military, the defense force, will have the responsibility of ensuring that we have adequately trained police officers to be part of this transition. So that's another piece of asset that will be coming under the wings of the Air Corps and the wings of the Ghana Defense Force. More importantly, I've authorized work to be concluded before the third quarter in this year to have a full presentation to the Defense Board of an aviation school, military and civil aviation school, to be run by the Air Corps, to be managed by the Air Corps, where we're going to reach out to all our retired assets from the Air Corps and those regionally as we seek to build one of the most modern, advanced aviation school in the Caribbean here in Guyana, providing training for all of the Caribbean. We're hoping to have all the formalities completed before the end of this year, so that by the first quarter next year, that school will be in full operation, both for the Defense Force, military, and security personnel in the region, and also to train civilian pilots and commercial pilots here in Guyana. We are sparing no effort in ensuring that we put our Guyana Defense Force and the Air Corps in the front line of modernization and transformation and creating an environment in which we are not second to none, but only second to ourselves. This vision requires transformation in thinking, transformation in the approach to our work, the workplace culture, and I've spoken about this already right here. The workforce culture must change and change rapidly. Aviation requires additional discipline additional responsibility and we're going to hold the leadership of Air Corps accountable. This is not 